Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. We live in New York City. We've lived here for 12 years. And it's always funny to me when we run into people on the subway and they're just like, you guys take the subway? It's like, yeah. Yeah, the, the limo is in the shop, you know? No, we, we take the fastest form of transportation, whatever city that we're in. And we were just down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We're actually going back again tomorrow for like a week. Mm-hmm. And... Down there, they do have public transportation. The MARTA. Shouts to the MARTA. <laughs> shouts to them because? You said it. So it's like one of those things. Like, you know how in any interview, if you say something, people are just like, yo, shouts to... I guess so. Shouts to that Shouts to MARTA? Person. Yeah. Uh, we've never taken MARTA. <laughs> just in case anybody in Atlanta is like, hey. We just take Ubers down there. You know, that's just like yo, the... shouts to Uber. It's the, <laughs> it's the fastest way to move around that city. And when you're down there, you're going to 30 minutes away or you're going five minutes away. You call an Uber and you, you jump into it. Is this an ad? This is, this is not an ad. Shouts to Uber. We take Lyft as well. Whatever. Yeah, whatever the Lyft. Whatever the service is. If you're going five minutes or 30 <laughs> minutes, you take the, the quickest and easiest transportation. The thing is, we're not taking the MARTA. We're not walking. You just call I, a car. I would take MARTA. Really? I would do it. Okay. Yeah. When we get down there... You can take Marta. Well, I mean, no. Here's I the thing. No, because we're, we're we'll being flown down by Red Bull. Shout out to Red Bull. And Red Bull has an, uh, a car budget for us. Yeah. And so we, so we, we take, take the, the car budget. They don't have a Marta budget for us, but if they did have a Marta budget. <laughs> you would take it? I would take the if Marta. They, if they gave you a Marta card, I don't even know if that's a thing, but if they gave you a Marta card to swipe. Yeah, I'm trying to support the city of Atlanta. We support the city of Atlanta. We're going back there. We're going to shop at local businesses. We're going to move around town. And the way that we've been moving around town is is via ride-sharing services like Uber. Yeah. And as you said on Twitter, we get into the nicest conversations with the most dynamic drivers in the city yeah I mean, how about that we had this uh driver the other day who he's a accomplished jazz musician yes his brother yeah designed the equimini cover crazy like we did not expect that to come out of this conversation but we're talking about you know different musicians what goes on around town and and actually we were on our way from a kevin gates show mm-hmm in Cobb County, so a, a half an hour drive down to Magic City. We were going to go meet up with some people over there. When we were going to go over there, yes, I had called Killer Mike, yes, just to be like, "We're in your city, yeah, like let's try and hang out, yeah." And I said, "Well, tonight we're supposed to go to Kevin Gates, yes," and he was like, "I'm in, yeah." And then I was like, "And we might be going to Magic City Mondays, right?" And he goes, "What kind of gentrified shit are y'all on?" Right. So we take from that. Mm-hmm. And we go down there this time, we're going to go to Blue Flame. Blue Flame. So we're yeah. on our way to Magic City Mondays because... Because Killer Mike said that we should We're gentrifiers. And we just wanted to... <laughs> no, we're going down there because we're going to go meet some people. In the middle of this conversation, on the way down to our destination, you got a text message from a mega producer's assistant. Mm-hmm. Somebody who we've been working a long time to get on the podcast. And he says... Are you all around now? Now, like 1 o'clock in the morning. If so, like, you know, come through. To their studio. Yeah. So we get dropped off at the studio, which, by the way, happens to be in a very desolate area. You there's know, there's nothing a, there. There's a, there's a warehouse across the street. Yeah, but the warehouse is not popping. Like, it's not <laughs> like there. there's nothing happening on this street. Yeah. And so it's starting to rain there. Mm-hmm. And the assistant texts us and says, I'm going to be there in like 25 minutes. Okay. So uh, here we are standing outside, ringing a doorbell, seeing that the lights are on inside Mm -hmm. and no one's responding. So what can you do? Because our Uber took off. Yeah. We don't have umbrellas. But sort of stand underneath this six inch cover above the garage. And so it's like. The two of us just waiting it out. We're going to be here for 25 more minutes. And, and that's fine. We both have phones. We can deal I'm with doing, it. <laughs> I'm doing the crossword. Yeah, like, I'm checking on social media, whatever it is. And to my right, I, I do see the door open. Mm-hmm. And out comes this big security guy. And this guy is just like, who are you? And, you know, we go into salesman mode. And we're like, hi, I'm Eric. I'm Jeff. We're together. We're, it's the, you know, the whole bit. Yeah, and this the guy song, the dance, and is this guy not having it. <laughs> Wanted to throw rocks at us. Yeah, he was like, why are you here? And at that point, we're like, well, uh, we were just texting with the assistant. Here is the proof. Show him the actual texts. And he says, how long ago was that? We show him the timestamps. And by the way, like the timestamps were two minutes beforehand. He dials the assistant. On speakerphone. That's the humiliating part. So He put it on speakerphone for everybody. (laughs) He puts the phone in his pocket and just stares at us 
while this shit rings. And then it goes to voicemail. All right. Dials him again. <laughs> so he keeps it on his speakerphone. Does not answer once more. All right, great. So he dials a third time. Ring, 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 <laughs> ring, 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 ring. Why is banana it, phone? Why is it different this time? Ring, ring, so ring, 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 ring. He ring, picks ring. up banana he, phone. He, he lets it ring and then he picks up. Okay. Yeah. So Hello? But he t- <laughs> he takes it off of speakerphone and like goes off to the side. Whatever, whatever. Talks to him and then leans over to us and he goes, popular podcast. And we're like, yeah, that's us. So he talks to the guy and he hangs up and he was like, he's not going to be here for another 25 minutes. He's coming from Cobb County. We're like, yeah, yeah, we know. We were just there and we've been texting with him as we showed you. So this guy's like, I don't know. Do you want to go get something to eat in the meantime? Just like beat it. And so you and I both look in one direction (laughs) and then the other direction and we go, no. No. (laughs) And so then he rings the doorbell. Yep. And some guy immediately comes and gets him. Now, by the way, we've been to, at this place to their studio yeah. a couple nights this week. I recognize the guy who opens the door. And you go, hey, that, it's that guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> he did not like that. No. Nor did the security guy. Security guy, and I'm not even joking, literally backs himself into the door and closes it while and staring locks at it. us. Yeah. What a bummer, right? So we're stuck out there. It's raining. We're underneath this thing, and we're just like, what the fuck? Like, how how did we get to this moment in our lives? We yeah. put in tw- 12 years in this business. We were just hanging out with Kevin Gates like 30 minutes we've, ago. He we've was accomplished like, things. He was stopping his meet and greet to hang out with us. And here we are, humiliated, wet, alone for another 20 minutes. Goddamn. And then the assistant pulls up. He does pull up in a pickup truck. And he says, get in. And I go, how far is it? <laughs> Drives us through the gate into the uh, back parking lot. Parks the car. He was bowling, by the way. Yeah. Killed Told us. us. He hustled some some kids bowling. Great. Yeah, said he made a lot of money. Glad he had to a, go to Magic City with a us great afterwards. Night. By the way, so we, we get led into the back door via the security guard now. And I was like, hey, yeah, see, we're with this guy. Thanks for keeping us out in the rain. And you were like, yo, sh- shut up. Yeah, I was like, what is this energy? <laughs> you thought I was going to get us, like, hurt or something like well, that. Well, I was just like, these aren't even, like, funny <laughs> jokes. Like, you're just like, all you're doing is just being a dick. I, I was let out in the rain. I'm wet. I'm angry. I'm just like, what are we for doing? For the record, I was not angry, especially <laughs> if the guy is listening to this. Because at the <laughs> end of the of the conversation, yeah, because, like, all we did was we pitched the, the assistant yeah. again on the podcast. And, and then actually already on board. met the producer. And, yes, it was... There was a positive end to this, but yeah. Yeah, but the guy who did not initially let us into the um, thing, he subscribes to our podcast now. So sh- <laughs> shout out to him. Great dude. Yeah. It just, you know, took a little while to get there. Yeah. You asked him, you're like, hey, so you're wearing a Yankees hat. You Are you from New York? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, shouts out to him. Big, big, nice guy. Yeah. Big, nice guy. Yeah, especially uh, if he's listening to this. And then, then then, the next day when we saw him again, really friendly. Yeah. Also, the big producer came up to us and he was like, podcast. So, mm-hmm. hopefully soon we're going to have a big producer on. It's going to be a great episode and we can all tell the story one more time. Jeff, we're heading back to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get some dope interviews down there. That's the plan. That is the plan. I did want to make mention that we so appreciate everybody who went to itsthereal.com slash shop and took advantage of that sale that we were doing to get us back from Atlanta. Wouldn't it be great? Yes. If since we're going to be in Atlanta. Yes. We did another sale. I'm all about that because we do have to return, right? Yeah. So if you guys go to itsthereal.com slash shop, help us get back from Atlanta part two. 40% off. Everything on our site is up to 40% off. Go to itsthereal.com today. Also, I have another special deal in process. Oh, what? Yeah. A what? huge, huge deal. Stop the music that wasn't playing. Okay. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Banana. <laughs> yeah, there's a deal on the phone. Yes. If you buy 200 t-shirts. Hold on, Jeff. Mm-hmm. You're looking at me when you say that. Mm-hmm. Is this deal just for me? No, it's for everybody listening out there. Oh, my God. I know. It's crazy. It is. If you buy 200 t-shirts, we'll send one to you for free. Wh- one more time. We're going to throw in another t-shirt. I wish people could see me. I'm in shock right now. Yeah, you 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 think it's 200, <laughs> you're getting 201. <laughs> the deal still like, holds. If you're if you're counting up all 200 shirts that you bought. If someone's in And then you're like, "Wait a minute. It feels like there's 201 in here. Do I have to recount?" No, you don't. If someone's in Dubuque, Iowa, yep. 
They buy 200 t-shirts. We're throwing in an extra one for free. If someone's in Scottsdale, Arizona, and they buy 200 t-shirts. 201. If, if someone's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they buy 200 t-shirts, they go to itsthereal.com right now, mm-hmm. and they buy 200 t-shirts, you're telling me mm-hmm. that they get 201? You want to know what? If you're in northern New Jersey and you have a 201 area code. Oh, my God. Not only will I throw in the 201st We have not t-shirt. discussed this. I just want to be very clear about this. I'm I will, hearing this for the first time. I will personally throw in a second one. <laughs> <laughs> what? Make it 202. That's a Jeff promise. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a guarantee. So uh, we did mention... Do, by the way, do go to itsthereal.com slash shop and get some of those t-shirts on sale right now. Yeah. We did mention we went to see Kevin Gates in concert down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Saw Drika. Fantastic show. Yep. And we did see Drika there. And shout out to Kevin. Shout out to Drika. Shout out to the whole team. This episode is very special. This is kind of a continuation on the, the Kevin Gates episode, which did crazy numbers. I don't think it's a, a continuation. The thing is that it, it gives the other perspective. No, 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 sure. But what I it. but I wanted to say was that like Drika was here for the Kevin episode. Yeah. And we did discuss on mic the idea of her being on her own episode. Yeah. So it's quite literally a continuation of that conversation. So, so it is what's happening today. Drika is on the podcast. Oof. And she's lived a really incredible life. I mean, it goes back to Baton Rouge. There's a lot of interesting family dynamic there. We we do get into her relationship with Kevin and how that developed in due time. But she wasn't even planning to be a music manager. No, but Kevin wasn't even planning on being a rapper. And so, like, the whole thing is crazy. It is, especially considering how excellently... They have done their business. Yeah. You know, like they went from nothing to something. No one believed in them. This was them when, against the world. Yeah. No one believed in them as a couple. No one oh, believed man. in them as as business people or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. Entertainment yeah. people. Yep. This is a really fantastic episode. It's one of those two. We did get stopped a lot in Atlanta by mm-hmm. people, especially who were looking for advice. And the best piece of advice that you really gave to them was, hey, Go check out our episodes on whatever service you you listen to because all of these episodes have the information that you as aspiring musicians, as aspiring producers, as aspiring executives, you'll get that information from these episodes. I honestly forgot that we had like – because we, we've had so many Uber drivers down yes. in Atlanta. Do we mention we take Uber? <laughs> or Lyft or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah Any yeah. service yeah. that wants to give us money, I'll, I'll probably shout them out. Yes. But shouts to Malik Johnson, who was one of the Uber drivers who yeah. said that he was going to start listening to our podcast as well. Yeah. Who is an aspiring uh, you know guy in this industry. So, so shouts to him. Honestly, there's something to get from every single episode. They're very informative. They're very inspirational. And should you want to – you know. Put your foot in this industry. That is the best way, I think, to get involved. Yeah. Jeff, when do you want to get into this episode? Right now. Yo, what up? It's Eric, a.k.a. Manufacturing Jobs, a.k.a. I used to get it in Ohio. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, a.k.a. Father of the Game, a.k.a. Mr. of the Game. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Drinka Gage. I'm sorry. I don't have, you know, hey, Boston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's your third favorite podcast to waste time with the thrill. <laughs> <laughs> Rika, what's happening? Nothing much. I'm just here with you guys. We're yeah. so happy to have you back. The I'm, return. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was here with Kevin and I'm, you guys were like cool as fuck. Like, <laughs> I never do interviews, but I will for sure do one with you. Well, thank Yo, you thank so you. much. It is an honor to have you sitting here. You were in town, um, you know, on press obviously before, but yeah. but uh, last night there was a Kevin Gates show at Terminal 5. Mm-hmm. How was it? It was amazing. The only, Kevin was like... A little tired, oh. which is unusual. Well, yeah, I thought he, he does not. He, he does, does not, not get, get tired. tired. Yeah, right? yeah. He wasn't feeling like his best, but the show was still like amazing because like he has this way of just like vibing with the audience, and so they were kind of like vibing off each other. So it was amazing. It was really good. Kevin's fans are unbelievable and loyal and passionate, supportive and, and supportive, yeah. and speak their minds. And they have left some of the most amazing comments. Um, all. You know, on on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, mm-hmm. um, they are huge Kevin Gates fans. Do you feel like you have found uh, his fans to be fans of yours as well? 
Yes, a lot of them are. But then, you know, what's so odd is that I actually, for some odd and strange reason, have like my own set of fans that are separate from him. The hive, the drink of hive. We both found that, yeah, yeah, kind of (laughs) weird because everything that I put out there is based on like Kevin and my relationship with Kevin and the business that we have together. So it's kind of weird for people to just be like, oh, I fucking love you, Kevin. I mean... I love you, Kevin, but I love Drika more. Yeah. Or I love you, Drika, and Kevin's. Eh. He's all right. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. What is the strangest environment you've been recognized in? Strangest environment? Have you been recognized at the airport? Have you been recognized? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens a lot, especially like if we're traveling, like people will come up and recognize me. But a lot of the times I have on sunglasses yeah. and a hoodie. Oh, wow. Because it's Some real like, celebrity swag. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's celebrity <laughs> swag, but I'm like low key kind of shy. So I'm kind of like just want to, you know, just yeah, go and just do be like in the cut. Yeah. Like, not whatever. be like, yeah. Yeah. Where are you originally from? From Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So Baton Rouge, Louisiana um, is uh, the same or different from when you were growing up like today? Uh, You know what? I think that it's pretty much the same. Like that place does not really evolve. Sorry, but (laughs) it just doesn't. Like it's the same fucking, it's the same place. What's the the big industry down there? The big, um... What is it like the chemical plants? Like, okay, that's the big thing down there. Which did you have family who worked horrible. there or anything? Yeah, or? my dad did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like everyone, like that's the thing to have like a what they call like a plant job. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. So yeah, that's the thing. Chemical plants. What yeah, kind of what, what kind of that? chemicals is it? Um, they make like fertilizer and just different stuff like that. Oil plants. Um, did your dad come home like smelling like that? Um. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm like thinking about it yeah. now. No, he never came home like smelling like that. But that's like, I think they have to go and like shower before yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So it's kind of like, no, I don't ever recall that. Do, what kind of hours did your dad do? Oh, there. that's like the 12, 12 hour shifts. Oh, man. Wow. So it's a lot. So yeah. like an eight to eight or something like that. Mm-hmm. or a, And yeah. so was there an expectation that maybe you would have a job there too? Oh, hell no. And and stay no. in town? Or, no, none of that? <laughs> no. Like, my parents really thought that I was going to just, like, travel the world and be single, never get married, never have any kids. That was their expectation? Yeah, for me. <laughs> do you have any brothers or sisters? I do. I have a younger brother. He's three years younger. He's actually our road manager. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's That's Kevin's dope. He's road manager. That's really dope. a lot dope. of people know that because we don't really, like... This is a family business. Yeah. yeah. This is like the plan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So you're the oldest child. I'm the oldest. And your parents are just like, she's going to you know, run around the world and do her. Yeah. What gave them that sort of idea? I was very, very independent growing up. Um, How so? Smoking cigarettes behind the <laughs> tennis courts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I was kind of just like, not self-contained, but like I, I, I really just kind of did my own thing. Whatever I wanted to do, I was doing it. I was a very, very good kid, though. Yeah. I was actually, I graduated third in my class. I had a fucking. Wow. Like, Congratulations. Point, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Four point three GPA. Like, wow. I was. We added how much, though? Hey. <laughs> yeah. Over. Yeah. Over a four point. I, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 I got confused. I was like, wait. wait, wait. Yeah. How'd you get the point three extra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just by taking like extra classes. And wow. um, when I was in high school, I actually used to go to the college and take classes so that I wouldn't have to take them during the regular school year. Well, what, Nerd shit. Yeah, but no, no. But what <laughs> what was that for you? Were you just like, I enjoy the extra stuff? Or were you like, this is going to be, you know, quite a resume for whatever college I applied to or whatever job I want to take? I was just like a fucking overachiever. Don't mind me. No, no what? <laughs> but, but to what end? But, like, cause you, cause you're overachieving for a reason, right? Like, yeah. what did you, what did you want to do? Just for the sake of doing it, to be honest with you. I mean, I actually, I wanted to be a doctor, um, because that, I guess, growing up in Louisiana, that was like the way that I felt that I could help people. Cause I'm a helper. Like anything I can do to just help anyone, like I'm gonna fucking do it. If it doesn't like put me like in a fucked up situation. That's yeah. why you showed up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Thanks for doing yeah. us this favor. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, please no. don't take it like that. I am not doing this as a favor. Like I really fuck with you guys. Right, like, we paid you, so it's not a favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait. So, hey, no. So, so okay. So, uh, it's valedictorian, salutatorian, and then third, there's no name for it, right? God, I don't. 
no, what the fuck? No, they they have names. Is no. there a name for it? For not, finishing I, third in like your class or whatever? Or? First loser or second loser? <laughs> 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 hey, no, I was up there. No. I was in high rank. Okay? Wait, did, did you have a did you have uh any title in the yearbook? Like a um You know what? And it's so crazy that has totally like went blank in my mind because I don't fucking remember. <laughs> You were in the yearbook. I was in the yearbook. You graduated. Yeah. I graduated. You walked that stage. Yeah, I walked the stage. Shook but with no, the right, right. No, take so with the left. I don't think yeah. there is. Like, my mind goes blank, so you have to forgive me. But no, no that problem. is facts. I can pull up the yearbook, show you my report card, all that good shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throwback Thursday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you have, like, any jobs in high school? No, I did not. Wow. I didn't have a job until I graduated. Is that right? Mm hmm because you didn't have time for a job. I, really, yeah. I actually didn't. I played volleyball. Um, I was, yeah. Yeah, what clubs time. were you in? Um, I wasn't really like the club type of chick. Mm -hmm. I was like the chick that associated with like everyone and was kind of like, you know, I was like an outcast, but not an outcast because I also was like prom queen. Wow. So it's just like. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, the life flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm, played volleyball. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 What, was, what, was, also, I, what was I remembered you know, for? But I was not the popular kid. You were the I prom queen. <laughs> no. That's, no, that's like the last resort. Like, prom is like at the end of the year. It's like, wait, so who are we going to vote for? This, you <laughs> no. know? Like, who's. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't like she's all that. Like, it wasn't like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, yeah, I was prom queen. But I really wasn't like the popular kid. I promise. You had a very enjoyable time in high school. Actually, oh, you didn't. I did not. Not my senior year. What happened? I'm. That's when I met Kevin. Okay. And according everything to, fell apart. <laughs> according, uh, hey, according to my friends and teachers, yeah, but that's not really what happened. Okay. How did you guys meet in the first place? Okay, so my parents dragged me to my brother's last football game. You did not want to go. I did not want to fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad I went. Yeah. Um, so here I am at the football game. We're all leaving. Uh, he was actually there to pick up his younger sister, who we later found out was like best friends with my brother. Crazy. Yeah. So he's like walking ahead of me, ahead of me, in front of me. And slow down. <laughs> I just want to get to know you. <laughs> Don't turn around. Jeff was class singer yeah. um, in, uh, in high school. It was in the choir. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually Bobby V. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, yeah, he was walking ahead of me. Um, by the time we got to the cars, he came by my car and, like, literally talked to me for, like, two fucking hours. Like, would not let me leave. Did your parents come with you? I was at the... No, I was driving myself. Okay. Because I had, like, my own car. So, I drove myself there. Mm -hmm. And we, like, literally stood standing for two hours just talking outside of my car. Were you like, this guy's different? Very different. Yeah. <laughs> so, what were you guys talking about? Uh, apparently he, everything. <laughs> right. He was basically, like, trying to sell me on why I should, like, fuck with him. And he was trying to leave with me, and I'm like, no, I don't fucking know you. Did like, he not have a ride home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did. But he was just like, I'm coming with you. And I'm like, no, you're not coming with me. Wait, so, where was his younger sister in all this? They, okay, so his sister was with his stepdad. Okay. Oh, Again. They were all sitting in the vehicle. I, they were waiting for him? <laughs> waiting. <laughs> yes. Two hours. Yes. I is can he, see why people didn't support this. Is he, <laughs> is he a good salesman? He didn't. He didn't get me that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. exchanged information, mm -hmm. but it took a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> this guy walks up to you in the parking lot, and you're just like, okay, spend two hours talking. Yeah. And then, how do things continue? We're like friends. I end up fucking staying on the phone with him until it's time to get up and go to school. Wow. And I would go and see him like after I got out of school and stuff like that. So that was going on for like months and months and months before yeah. anything like really happened. And this is your senior year in high school. This is my senior year in high school. So did, did that relationship, that friendship, whatever it was, mm -hmm. did that lead you to, uh, like clearly you're still excelling in school. Yeah. But... Why would your teachers think that maybe, or your friends think that maybe you were going on a different path? Um, I think it was because, like, for me, when I met Kevin, one thing I learned from him was just to kind of, like, just be myself and to kind of just, like, let go of what people fucking thought about me and just really to just do me. How dope really. is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, the biggest thing I learned from him, and I'm so glad because even though I think 
the reason why I was such like an overachiever was probably like from the push, like from my dad, you know, because his thing was always like, if better is possible, then you're not doing your best. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of like in my brain. So I just was always just kind of like looking for that validation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trying to outdo myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your first date with Kevin? Um, not really a first date <laughs> uh, per se, but I remember like the first time I told him that I loved him mm. and I didn't even really just say I love you. I was like, I think I love you. Yeah, I, th you know? <laughs> I think <laughs> I was like a hard ass. I wasn't like I had maybe like one or two boyfriends in high school because I was just kind of like independent in my own world. Like, I don't need you. Yeah, right. just breaking yeah, hearts, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. prom queen, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> you have boyfriends, but this is a man, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so you said I I think I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> yes, because I wasn't like I was a hard ass. Yeah. But was he like more effusive? Was he more? He was like, you're going to be mine. Like you are mine. Like you know. Is I'm that what he said he... the first day? No. Yeah. Okay. But his actions. Yeah. He was like he wasn't letting me go. What sold you on him? What what appealed to you about this guy? He has a huge heart, you know, and he's super fucking intelligent. Like if we can have like a intelligent <coughs> conversation, like if we can talk about talk about like otherworldly type shit, like spirituality and stuff like that, man, you got me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he's that guy. What did you think about his uh, path. Did you know about his artistic side at that time? I had no idea, but you know something? I did tell him, I was like, you know what? We're meant to do something great together. And I, he will tell you this, also told him that uh, he would be a motivational speaker. And this was before he even started rapping. Wow. It was like I had this vision for him, and like when I first met him. Wow. Yeah. Did he receive that well? He was just like, mm, whatever. <laughs> 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 you know? But hey, I think I was right about that one. Though. Yeah. <laughs> did he um did he come to your prom? He no, you know what? We saw each other afterwards. Cause I, I went with someone else. Yeah, sorry sorry <laughs> to your prom date. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll see you afterwards, Kevin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that was my way of like getting out of the house because like my parents were like, uh, no, like he's not coming to the house. He's not like they just were not accepting of it at all. Well, when did they become accepting of him? Uh you years later when really we had our first kid is it something where you had to sell your parents on that or you just didn't care and they'll eventually come around in your mind yeah i yeah. didn't give two fucks of course it hurt but i didn't care i was like this is like where my heart is this is where you know what i'm saying and, yeah and i just we just lived our own life like they literally like i'm going back a little bit but they, everything was stripped away from me. Like I had my car taken away from me. They stopped paying for school. Like oh. I was literally stripped of everything. As in, as in your parents in not wanting you to be with Kevin yes. said there's consequences to this. Yeah. Like that, it was very serious. That's heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. And it made it very difficult. Yeah. Is there anybody who did support your relationship? You know what? I have this one uh, cousin, Ashley, and like my family uh, in Mississippi, they were all like very supportive of it. It was just like my parents. How far away did they live? From About you? 45 minutes. Okay. And that's that was sort of like our getaway. We'd like get in the car and ride on the back roads. So fucking beautiful. And we just go there and hang out with them. Wow. Was yeah. Kevin's family supportive? Yeah, they were. But he had this aunt. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna go any further because she because li she because yeah. she listens to this podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? You're, you're traveling 45 minutes. You're hanging out with we each other. Out. You're dreaming the biggest dreams. Yeah. But you're still living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yes. yes so, yes. Uh, where where do you see your guys, you know, path taking you at the time? Um, to be honest with you, it was just kind of like um, at this point. I going from being like trying to plan everything out, being OCD about everything to kind of just allowing things to happen. Mm. And this is what I gained from Kevin, which for me is a good <laughs> thing. Cause I was, I drive you crazy with having like, look, we're doing this at this time. Oh, that. you know what I'm saying? And drive myself fucking crazy. Yeah. But, um, so wait, just, 
jumping forward. I know, I know. No, 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 but, but, but if you guys travel now in, mm-hmm. in 2019 and you guys go to Europe or something like that, you have an agenda of things you want to do? Yeah, like I sites you want to see? I I'm a fucking Yelper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have all the guides or whatever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do do that. Like, okay. Before we go to the city, I'm like, hmm, let's see what kind of museums they have. Like, just fun shit. Yeah. yeah. You know? How's Kevin as a traveler? He just likes to go out and go for walks okay. and stuff like that. So yeah. that works. Yeah. 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 You you can lead and he'll go with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, you graduate high school. Yeah. What happens after that? Were you like, I'm going to go to this college. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to become a doctor. What is it? Yeah. Okay. So I had a full scholarship to go to this school in like St. Louis, but I was like, I don't want to go. I didn't want to leave Kevin. So wow. I didn't go there. So I went to Louisiana State University, which mm-hmm. is in LSU and back. Yeah, Rouge. yeah. Go Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went there for um, two years on a partial scholarship. Mm-hmm. Um, Majoring in pre med. Okay, so yeah. still on. You were still, still, yeah, still, still on that yeah, path. Yeah, I'm still on that. You path. say it so like regretfully. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like now I'm going ahead, but nowadays I would never fucking be like a traditional doctor. Yeah, I'm like yeah. so against that shit. Yeah. What would you have done if not that? Pre med. Um, I actually. Would you have gone for more like well rounded sort of like just general college, uh, arts and sciences sort of just like and then figure it out later? Yeah, I actually towards the end like right before I dropped out. I actually uh, had changed my major to fashion merchandising because that was something complete that, like 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. my parents were like, the, the different kind of stitching, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, was in college. Yeah, dropped out. Um, after like my first two years and you know your first two years of college is shit that you did in high school it's right. like the same old so i was just like you know what fuck this i actually went and got my uh mortgage uh loan originators license and i was a licensed realtor and at the same time kevin was just he was like getting into like rap yeah and like taking it seriously actually like recording music and I started managing him. So well, this was like 2006. When How? he when he first plays you or first says, I get because mm-hmm. he probably said he wanted to rap before he actually did yeah. it, right? And so when he told you he wanted to rap, mm-hmm. what went through your mind? I thought that he was fucking talented because he always had notebooks. Kevin's like a writer. Like he'll tell you that. Like he's always been like a writer. And to hear his, I guess his, uh, you know whatever his music come through like the speakers and stuff like that shit was amazing to me i was like dude you're fucking talented like you should take this shit seriously pre-med for two years Mm -hmm. an interest in fashion design (laughs) tell me about your your uh music manager experience to that point uh i had absolutely none Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) no experience in the music industry whatsoever but i did grow up listening to like all genres of music and i got that like from my dad like we listened to fucking jazz and then put on some uh, tupac and biggie like Mm -hmm. i look i grew up listening to like everything yeah um but as far as getting i'm big on doing like research so i bought the um what's the fucking music business book oh the red book yeah, the, yeah. The, um yeah i don't Damn. remember the name of it too. Yeah, yeah but it's basically like all you need to know about the music ben- in right. music industry so i like read through that shit i talked to as many people as many people as i could um try to gain relationships with like people at radio just like whatever like i literally everything that i know to this day is shit that i had to learn on my own and that was in like uh, uh, all in Baton Rouge. Yeah, yeah. How many radio stations are There's around? Yeah, not many. Yeah, <laughs> there's just like one main radio station, ninety four one. Um, By all accounts, um, you were the the manager. You're the promo team. You are the radio <laughs> rep. You are the you're everything. The DJ, the yeah. driver, the security. Everything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. When did you feel like there was like you always saw potential, but when did you yeah. feel like something shifted and you're just like, oh, this is this is moving? Even if it was local, like mm-hmm. you're just like I heard on the radio or like someone's talking about it. What what was the moment? Um, I think it was maybe like a few years later. I wanted to say maybe like two to three years later. So now we're in kind of like 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's they played his song on the radio, Get In The Way. It's like an old like reggae-ish type vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they played that on the radio. And, and where were you? you when they, yeah, yeah. Where, where were you? <laughs> in Baton Rouge, just riding around in my car. <laughs> so you, they, they didn't give you like a heads up? 
I mean, we had been going up there. I, I had been going up there and gave him CDs and hitting them up at the club, like going to the club with the CDs dressed up because I'm a female. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Get their attention. Right. Yeah. Um, and not leaving the club until they played the song. Uh, but hearing it on the radio, that was when it was like, yeah. How hard did you go for Kevin? Um, and did you feel like you had to make up for maybe he wasn't, you know, the one out in front? You were like, I got to go double as hard to sell him. Hmm. Because he was still, at this time, he was still like in the streets and didn't really want to get out of the streets. And I'm like, dude, we got to fucking like, the only way this is going to work is this, is if you give it your all. And I have to say something that I no longer do this, Mm -hmm. but at the time I actually, he got out of the streets and I got in the streets in order to like make this shit happen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you were so committed to this. Yeah. Your parents (laughs) were out of the picture. Yeah, completely out of it. Which, I mean, that's got to be heavy on you. Yeah, it was. And you're like, I'm going all in on this. Like to the extent where you're just like, let me get my hands dirty yeah and did you like there's no backup plan right you're like there's no backup plan all of my eggs were in one basket (laughs) who 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 called you crazy everybody did everybody thought we were fucking crazy there are people now to this day that'll call him up and ask you know if they could get on board and it's like what the fuck like it's too late now oh you You had a long memory yeah yeah Yeah, like and it's not like oh you shit it on us back then but it's just like it's literally too late like there's no place for you like what are you gonna do we have a bomb ass team who's been with us for years you know and we're not gonna let you come in and replace them doing some shit shit that you don't even know you know what i'm saying you know nothing about it yeah what did kevin say when you were like i'm gonna I'm going to get in the streets and do what I have to do. I mean, it wasn't really kind of just, it just something that like happened. It was kind of like my way of being like, look, this is, this has to go like this in order for this to be successful. Like, yeah. You know, did you ever feel there was a moment where you, you guys weren't on the same page? Of course there has definitely been times like that. Yeah. Always because as confident as he may seem at times, like he really like doubted himself. And, and yeah, he we, still he, does he, to this he, day. Yeah. And, he, <laughs> and, he, and he talked about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, because so. he's somebody who he didn't have any confidence in himself. Right. You know, like he was just like, I don't, um, I don't feel good about my body. I don't feel good about like all these different things. And then, how much did you have to like make up for that? Man, lots. I mean, because that's really, and also with him, like, just dealing with depression and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's a lot. Like, you constantly having to, like, build this person up while also just, like, building a business. And, you know, so it yeah. was a, it's a lot. And, yeah. and in terms of business, I think we can fully appreciate this. Yeah. We're self-made. Yeah. Um, when it's just you against the world. Yeah. That's man. a lot. That's a lot. It is. It is. But we made it happen. And it's like, to this day... It's like no one can fucking say that they had a hand in what we have. Like, yeah, that's and, and that makes that you feel is, better. Like, feels yeah. so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what did you guys uh, allow yourselves to do for fun? Were you able to like travel, or you able to like you know have a date night, or go like see movies, or like get away from what is a twenty four hour a day oh, yeah. thing? Um, we actually did not start doing that until recently. Believe wow. it or not. Wow. Like, cause he was always in this grind, grind, grind mode, and me, like I, you know, you don't get any fucking sleep. People will call you and text you at three, four o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. this is a twenty-four hour industry. Like it never sleeps. Mm, yeah. You know? But it wasn't until recently where we started like just traveling and getting away. But like in the past, we would have just like gone for a ride or something. Like yeah. the car was like our place to be, just listening to music and vibing out. Yeah. What kind of car was it? Um, there's been a few been a few but back then when it was it was like an old um mercedes uh s series Mm. yeah that was the one when everything was you know taken because he he talked about how that was like street money still right yeah there was an involvement for a time with a local um record label Mm -hmm. was that something that you were looking at as maybe it's going to be a forever type of thing oh never okay never (laughs) you were like this is the first step this is the first step (laughs) And that was, it was a situation where it was a friend of his Mm -hmm. and it just didn't, it it was like, as soon as it 
started like i was ready to kind of get out of the situation yeah. yeah you know but for kevin and him having a relationship with those people it was like kind of had to like wean him out of off of it how do you know who to trust man i'm very intuitive and i'm an empath mm. like i came back here to fuck with you guys because you y'all have like awesome energy thank you if you didn't i would have yeah, yeah. You know, politely. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but like, I'm really, really good with energy. Yeah. Like, you cannot fucking fool me when it comes. You can say whatever the fuck you want to say, but my mind and my, I'm not even listening to you. I'm just picking up yeah, on, right. off of the energy that you're giving off. And what was, what, what was the key to uh, your success in those, those years where you're like still local? Still just going out and still just doing my thing in addition to what they were doing so like local performances local or like performances regional and in the state of louisiana so we basically like took over louisiana before we moved on and that was just through booking shows through going to like events like we didn't really have a lot of well there are a lot of festivals mm -hmm. and just like events and passing out cds and things like that yeah so we literally took over louisiana we fucking toured that thing from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top again what's the weirdest gig that he did during that time weirdest <laughs> well there was one that he always talks about that i will never forget i almost <laughs> died <laughs> oh for real no oh, okay. right. <laughs> oh there have been those but um <laughs> He got up on the fucking stage and just literally forgot everything. <laughs> I was like, this is not happening because this is in the beginning and you're dealing with promoters and you're like, fuck, they're never going to book you. Again. So you just hear <laughs> instrumentals? <laughs> yes. But he literally jumped off the stage and he's like much bigger than he is now. Yeah. He's like big and had like dreads and shit. So here he is with the mic and kind of just like going through the crowd like this. And I'm like, but you're still. <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck yeah. did people fuck with it um <laughs> <laughs> were they, they like were this is a weird like, like art like, performance yes yeah. it was yeah it was just very strange yeah and weird but i'm so glad we got past that but i'll never forget that has anybody ever come up to you and been like i was there no but you know what if we were to go back and do some shows like in the clubs that we used mm -hmm. to yeah we'd probably get that yeah in, in those clubs yeah. when it gets like hot in there oh. like no, no no but like not temperature wise i'm oh. saying like you can sense that like you know there's something's, something's about to pop off yeah and yeah. it's time to go yeah, yeah. yeah. always been there yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> always yeah and we go straight for the door and right and what's the what's the difference between um a baton rouge crowd and a, a new orleans crowd oh god um, uh, <laughs> you know what? I will, I will say that they're really kind of one in the same. Okay. Kind of one in the same, especially in a, in a club setting. Yeah. Oh, you're dealing with the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're dealing with the same so you had, you had, you had your base and then you're yeah. growing out an audience. Mm -hmm. Um, was Houston big for you guys? Okay. So tell you a little story about Houston. Houston was the first place that we moved to after um he got out of prison in 2011 mm -hmm. so we basically went down there and did the same thing that was done in louisiana like he would go out to different studios and do features with artists that were like popping in the city and that's how that happened and what kind of relationship did you have with houston before that none really we had only been out there a few times before um what were the the awards the um damn i don't even think they do it anymore ozone Yes. Wow. Ozone Awards. Yeah. Uh, we had only been out there. Shout out to, to Julia that. Beverly. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, we started literally like from scratch. Man. And took it took over Houston. Wait, like when that. when um when Kevin was in prison, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind in terms of like this thing that you put everything into, and you're just like like had he fucked up? Like were you were you mad at him? Were you mad at the system? Where um, did you place your emotions? into work and just keeping everything going because i knew it wasn't like a forever thing it was fucked up because he had to be gone for i mean they literally told him 30 years and it was like oh man yeah. that's a long time but yeah we knew that that 30 years wasn't going to happen so it's just like we just kept pushing it and at the time that was basically through radio at this time like i was working with the label um so basically just keep pushing the songs through radio and hosting events and keeping like the music alive just make sure that wait the music you were hosting events played. 
Hmm? You were hosting events or? Myself and the the guys from the label, they had uh, purchased like this club. So it was always like every night was like a Kevin Gates night. Yeah. And then in the peop- with the contacts that I had, we made sure that the music was still being played up in throughout Louisiana. Yeah. So, so uh, before he went away, how much music was in the stash? A lot. Yeah. Kevin's like a fucking serial recording. Like <laughs> <laughs> just stays in the studio and Yes. Yeah. And he makes great music. Like he may go in and like record like three songs. It may not all be completed, but it's still good shit. Yeah. Like was when, it up to you then as to how to release it? Mm-hmm. And yeah. did you so you put together like, okay, these ten songs, these twelve songs and yeah. yeah, and I still I do that to this day. But people did not realize that until we released the By Any Means 2 while he was in jail this last time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, because I, I did an interview, and I'm like, yeah, I put it together, da 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 And I'm like, but this is something, like, I've fucking been doing. And, it, and it's, like, really, really hard. Like, having to narrow down, like, damn near 70, 80 songs to fucking <laughs> fuck 10 I, to 17. Right, like, yeah. That is the hardest thing <laughs> well, ever. You have to basically come up with the vision. Yeah, for the project as a whole. You yeah. Know? I love so, that yeah. you came over here and you were just like, oh, like Kevin's way more interesting. Like, I'm not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. You- because I'm like, I'm fucking boring. I handle the business. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's the interesting part. <laughs> hey, gang, it's Jeff here from the podcast, the podcast you were just listening to, A Waste of Time with It's the Real. That's and one. let me tell you something. Maybe you skipped the intro. Maybe you didn't hear everything we were talking about. But on our website right now, it's the mm-hmm. If you go and you buy one shirt, two shirts, three shirts, yes. it's up to 40% off. We're having a sale right now. Right now. Someone should have told me. It's the real.com slash shop. Mm-hmm. Get yourself some clothes today. But let me also tell you something. Yes. Here's another special offer. Yeah. If you buy 200 t-shirts. Hold on. I'm throwing in another one for free. That's the Jeff special? That's the it's the real guarantee. <laughs> if you buy 200 t-shirts right now. Mm-hmm. You'll get an extra one. It won't be. One. It's not like, oh, I made a mistake and there's like the wrong number. No. It's done on purpose. Yeah. 200 t-shirts plus one. Plus one. Okay. If you buy 201 t-shirts. Yeah. I think we have to do some thinking before we put that idea out there. Let's just focus on the 200. Okay. Plus one. If you buy 201 t-shirts though. Yeah. I'm going to throw in another one. <laughs> Jeff, don't go crazy on him. Yeah. Everything up to 40% off. Get us back from Atlanta. Part two. Back. To the podcast. Looking back now, um, I know when, when we talked about the cash money thing with uh-huh. Kevin, yeah. he said, you know, I, I said, uh, did you learn things from them? He's yeah. like, they learned things from me. Yeah. Um, what do you think about your time involved with, with them? them? Yeah. Um, it was a weird situation. I didn't quite like it. Mm-hmm. Only because they didn't see him as being a solo artist. And that really didn't sit well with me because I knew his abilities and I knew that he was meant, like he was a fucking star then. Like I knew that he would be a star. They were trying to put him in this group and I'm like, no. But What was, was the like, name of the group? Three, man, they were trying to actually come up with a name and they hadn't, but it was like stupid shit, like three thieves or something. I'm like, You're pulling your hair no. out. Yeah, like, I'm just, like, this yeah, is yeah, not yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, like with him, like you have to let him kind of just like do his thing and, you know, feel his way. So I was, God, I was so happy when that came to an end. Yeah. I'm like, this is not a group. Mm -mm, You don't see three thieves out here. (laughs) No. Name ringing bells. Especially not that. Three thieves. Three thieves sounds like an 80s, like, you know, B-boy group. Yeah. (laughs) Like, huh, 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 huh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was not with that at all. <laughs> so Atlantic Records comes into your life. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your recollection of them reaching out? Okay, so I'm talking a lot of stuff, but I don't mind. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, so at the at that time, now I'm going back a little bit. Okay, so me being a female, people didn't really respect me. And then being Kevin's girlfriend at the time, people really, that was like a double whammy. You're a female and you're his fucking girlfriend. We don't respect you. Whatever. So um, we had this guy managing him at the time. It's kind of like I, I worked through him, mm-hmm. you know? So we had a meeting with Atlantic, but he's basically cash money. Okay, mm-hmm. so here we are, Atlantic. I'm like, Atlantic's 
that's that's that that's the home team. Like that's who we need to be fucking with. And kid you not, the morning we were supposed to fly to uh, L.A. to sign with them, this dude pulls the fucking plug, and I'm like, oh. get the fuck out of here! <laughs> like what? Only because he wanted to push the cash money agenda. And I was like, fuck no. Like, this is not happening. We have to reschedule it. And when we rescheduled, that's when we signed the paperwork. Wow. That was in, like, 2012. Wow. Yeah. Was it hard to push out that other guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, to be honest with you, I allow people to fucking, like get themselves out of the picture you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. like i'm not gonna push you out you're gonna do it you yourself say. yeah <laughs> yeah you know so you sign the paperwork out in la mm -hmm. and are you ready to press that button like are you like oh we're good Let's to go it. yeah yeah because they they were like they're we have like a great partnership with them it's like they've learned from us and we've learned a lot from them yeah in return yeah you know? shout out so. to um chelsea northern shout yes. out to sam crespo yes. there's a million people over yeah, there the whole team yeah but but it's 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 got to feel incredible At to have point? a machine yeah. Hell yeah. Do their job the right way, right? Like Hell yeah. And they are one hell of a machine and they they make it happen. Was it yeah. was it weird to you to delegate? Um yes, because coming from doing everything myself and having to hand it over, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just now getting to the point of being able to like delegate things. But sure. I had to do it like for my own sanity. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> what was your philosophy in going into the building? Like did you want to meet every single person? No, not really, because what I found, like, in life, like, the right people will come to you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, You deal with energy. Yeah. 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 So the right people and the right and the wrong people can't even come around. So it's like, and if they do get around and get in for a hot second, like, they're gone, like, you know, because yeah. they, 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 they can't even... Keep it, up. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so when you were living in, in Houston, mm -hmm. at any point, did your parents reach out and be like we see what you're doing and we, you know, appreciate the work that you're putting in. And it, maybe we didn't see it going that way, but you're doing it. No, but something really crazy happened. That's also the time when I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter, Isla. Well, my only daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's when the relationship with my mom and I started. So you reached out to tell her. Yeah. Okay. And and my dad. Yeah. And and were they like <laughs> over the moon? My mom was. My dad's like the fuck. Like, you're not <laughs> married. Like why are you having a baby? You know. You know. Um. They they lived their life in a different way. <laughs> yeah. You know their journey was not yours. <laughs> no. Not and at also all. the one that you led was not what they thought was going to happen. Oh no, not yeah. at all. <laughs> so so uh you you got pregnant. Yeah. Um. Were you ready for it? Yeah, it was actually planned. Okay. So, yeah. And and how did being a mother change you? Oh, man. That's like, you guys don't have kids yet, right? Right. That is a love like no other. Like, even like for the mom or the dad. Like, that's a love like no other. Yeah. yeah. Even more selfless. Yes, even more. And You're... I had to give up a lot of my OCD ways and all of that. Yeah, was that when, tough? When a kid is throwing up on you, it's hard yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah. You have to, like, say, Fuck it and throw all that shit out the window. Did you, yeah. did you, okay, you're a big Yelper and you're a big like studier. Did you get all the baby books? I didn't buy, I, I got the right one. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is called, it's like, it's, it's a red book. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Music industry and babies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, I, and I, and I did feel, feel my way, uh, with like the first kid. Like, I don't, I'm not, I, I did do a lot of research on like the right things to do. But other than that, like, that was like, I, you have to feel your way. How yeah. was your pregnancy? It was great. Like, <laughs> I don't know. You guys probably don't know this, but I actually had both of my kids be a water birth. Wow. No mm. medications. Uh, wow. In our townhouse in Atlanta. Wow. Yeah. Did you have a, a doula? Yeah, I had a, a midwife. Okay. It was just me and the midwife. Shout her out. <laughs> Rachel Hart. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what did you like most about Houston? Um, Houston was cool. It was different from uh, Louisiana. It was like a step up from Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. It was cool, but it's a that's a big city. It's huge. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge, and we stayed in a nice part of it. Um, but that actually came to an end pretty quick. I okay. think it was like maybe a couple of months. Wow. But so any when, reason? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. so we were staying in this really really nice loft. 
and um, they didn't allow like convicted felons. So me trying to finagle my way, I didn't put Kevin on the right on the. You are not a convicted felon. Right. Yeah, I'm yeah, not a convicted yeah. Felon. He's yeah. your boyfriend. Right. right. <laughs> You're an aspiring doctor. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Right. Pre-med student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. All that shit. Yeah. Um, and they eventually found out that he was there because they had cameras, I guess, mm. up everywhere. And they sent us a notice saying that if he uh, if he didn't leave the building or if he were to come back, then... I mean, well, basically, they told us we had to get the fuck out. Well, oh no, God. only yeah. he did. It could have just been yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I'm not going to tell him, hey, you can't fucking come home. <laughs> right, you know? yeah. right. So they There fucking, are rules, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they yeah. kicked our ass out. Damn. Fuck. And yeah. so from there... We had to go back to Louisiana. Man. Um, but we only stayed there for a few months and then it was off to Atlanta. Right. What did you, what did you think of Atlanta as a city before you moved there? Um, I don't know. I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, Atlanta's better. Okay. I'm not going to say that. Cause <laughs> feels, those feels are like, two feels, very feels like you should. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's love for yeah, all. Every, yeah, love yeah. for every. Movement. Every market is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for all your support. Yeah. V103. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. I just knew that it was like. I felt like we were drawn to Atlanta. Like that was like the next stop for us. And yeah. so, and so you settled there. <laughs> yeah. Did you like it at first? Yeah, that's it's, good. It was really cool. They have like a bunch of I'm now I'm like a nerd, geek, whatever you want to call it. But they have these awesome as like hiking trails and like creeks and stuff. Like I love that kind of. They stuff. They have like um sort of like how they have the High Line here, mm-hmm. where they uh, redid a, a an old train track that it was no longer being used, and they made it into a park. Like that's yeah. what they did for Atlanta. Yeah. So it's like all the train tracks that go around the it city. All, yeah. 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 So is that where you would hike, or do you mean like actual like like Stone Mountain, like going up there? No, I not. I went to Stone Mountain as a kid, but there like there were hiking trails like near our townhouse where we lived. So dope. we would go there and like creeks and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. In this time, um, Kevin's career is is steadily moving up. Yep. Um, there's more respect for his music. Yeah. There's more sales behind it. Um, what did you feel was really like where it ramped up to like the next level for, for his career? Hmm. The next level that probably had to happen in, I want to say like in 2013, that was only like a year later after signing. And that was after we did like our first real like hard ticket tour. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, we got this. <laughs> Completely sold out. We didn't come off tour with a fucking penny, but it was awesome. Well, just to- and and for for a lot of people out there, they don't understand that that's like a good sacrifice to oh, make. Oh yeah. Like you can be even or you can be down a little bit, but you've started the the whole momentum. Yep. Yeah. And also just like all the product that starts moving yep. on top. Of so it. it makes the next one easier. Exactly. Yeah. And it yeah. gets easier and easier and you get more money in yeah. your pockets. Yeah. But I, I do have realized that a lot of the younger artists now don't fucking understand that. Yeah. And it's like. They don't like, understand a lot of things. They don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just like, give me, give me, give me. I'm, I'm entitled to this. Like, give me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but yeah, we literally started touring, making, I I still have old contracts where we were picking up $250, $500, $1,000, Yeah. you know, and then that first hard ticket tour, like every, all the money that we made off of that went back into, well, it went to pay for, um, you know, like the DJ and travel hotels and all that shit. But I call that our promo. Like, oh, we're going to do a promo run. We're not going on tour. We're going to do promo. Yeah. yeah. That's basically like basically like a way for you to spread your fucking music yeah. all across. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, was it hard for you as like, as you've risen up, mm-hmm. is it harder to make friends? To be honest with you, I don't have any friends. And I lost a lot of my friends early on. So I'm just like, whatever. You know, yeah. I meet good people like you guys mm-hmm. and I yeah. fuck with y'all. Yeah. And, you know, that's like my life to yeah. this day. But like, we will never be friends. <laughs> is no, what you're telling me. No, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. You're like, there are boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't say I No, no but I see us being friends. Like, you guys Most are good definitely. people. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, that. Yeah. But I don't have no like people 
really outside of the industry that that I don't really. So we yeah. spoke with with Kevin about this too, where uh, there was a point where he was able to accept people back into his life. Mm-hmm. Um, he was able to forgive his mm-hmm. family. Um, have you hit that place where you're like, I understand that someone may be going through something and that's their issue and it's not your issue mm-hmm. and you're able to say, okay, we can reset. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually like that with everyone. Even if we, if you do something wrong to me, like I'm not going to hold a grudge or anything like that. Like you're basically automatically forgiven just for the sake of my own health and sanity. Like you can't fucking walk around holding grudges with everyone. Cause that type of shit, like people don't know that, but having like bad holding on to bad energy and stuff that causes cancers and all kinds of diseases and shit like that and and i love myself so yeah i'm not holding on the fucking grudges but and if we've been there once like i feel like it may happen again so just to prevent you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but i'm not holding any grudges i'm just not gonna allow any negative bad energy like in my space who yeah. are, who, i'm not doing that, that that's good. sorry <laughs> who are some of the most enjoyable people in this business that you've like come across that you've been able to work with hmm. so i get like artist wise yeah. sure or yeah. even behind the scenes people i don't care <laughs> um artist wise like i love kilani like she has like a really beautiful spirit like, yeah i love her um we just met her manager who's like amazing as well yeah yeah david I've, I've never met him, but I've met, and she's just, I love her. Mm. Yeah. Um, but all of my other people are basically like behind the scenes. Cause mm-hmm. that's the people I talk to like day in and day out. Yeah, like yeah. Chelsea, Sade, Diani, like Brian, like those are like my day to day people. And we all vibe like really well. That's dope. So, yeah. So, yeah. um, you were uh, Kevin's uh, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You were his uh, baby's mother. Baby mama. <laughs> you uh, are Kevin's wife. How yeah. did how did that develop? And uh, were you guys planning to be married, or was this something that took you by surprise? Um, it was definitely something that took me by surprise because it's kind of like you be with someone for so long. It's just like you don't know what the it's like. <laughs> I like you, you like me, <laughs> you know, like wherever it goes, whatever. I think I love you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I didn't really know. And I'm not the person to like kind of like push that. I for sure did not want to force that mm-hmm. on a person, especially someone like Kevin. You don't force anything <laughs> on Kevin or it's going to like blow up. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, um, but he fucking surprised me. We were in a um, a jewelry store, and he was actually picking up some jewelry for himself in Atlanta. And next thing I know, he's like, oh, you like that ring right there? And I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. I fucking turned my back. And my son, I just had had him. He's like in a little kangaroo pouch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I turned back around. <laughs> and Kevin's on his knees, like apologizing to me for like all the bullshit and just saying how much he loves me he's like crying i'm crying and i'm like wow i can't believe this shit is happening and the guy in the store actually got it all on camera so i don't know if he fucking knew that kevin was gonna do that that day or if he just did it spontaneously that's awesome that's amazing but it was really cool Yeah. yeah how did the wedding like come together um i like probably started planning it immediately <laughs> like you do like to list would. things yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and i am a planner <laughs> yeah so i already had like my theme together and all that good what shit. was the theme it was rustic vintage mm. <laughs> yeah and where where was it it was in new orleans yeah. at the uh, roosevelt hotel and why why did you want to do it down there uh, so that uh, like the majority of our family members could, you know, mm-hmm. cause that's where the majority of the people that we knew, that's where they were, um, lived. Okay. So it's, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. Um, was there any part of you that when you're standing up there and you're taking your vows, looks around and you're just like, none of you, <laughs> none of you thought <laughs> that this day would come and look at us now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? That's right. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I mean, like, for so long, people just looked at us just like, what Crazy. the fuck are y'all yeah. doing? It's just you. You know? Yeah. 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 Like, we literally, every time we moved, we literally packed up in a matter of like two or three days and was like, peace. You know? Crazy. <laughs> 
It's crazy. It's you guys against the world. Yeah, literally. And you feel like that like that every day. Yeah, yeah. every fucking day, living it. Um, <laughs> what was your song? Um, and also, what was the song that like went up the hardest at your wedding? Okay, so our song was the instrumental to... Wait, depends which one did, did I walk out to or... No, Whichever no. one you're answering is fine. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I actually walked out to the instrumental to uh, What's Up With It, which is a song on kevin's project mm -hmm. and he chose the um the fuck that cheerleader song gwen stefani no no no, no. no. not gwen <laughs> stefani i love her by the way that would be not... amazing if you like if hollow back girl <laughs> yeah 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 was he, what kevin this picked. shit wait, is wait 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 guess what kevin actually redid hollow back girl what <laughs> yes real shit and it's on it's on like an old cd that that i have yeah w uh, upload that and email it by I the way yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah, wavelength that we're on right now yeah yeah i know yeah i say hey, no i told you i'm very yo that, that shit is b-a-n-a-n-a-s <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah he did but it was not that song no it that, wasn't yeah, that song. yeah yeah <laughs> um i think i found myself a cheerleader oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah 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 the one that's yeah. actually a cheerleader song yeah like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, oh me or song. whatever yeah yeah were you ever a cheerleader no i was okay not. yeah I yeah volleyball. yeah i know yeah. i know yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, volleyball yeah. Close song. Enough. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 set spike all yeah. that yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh yeah wow. so that was that was a song he picked but we actually danced to tootsie roll oh, right wow. on <laughs> a nice slow song yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yes did you guys have a honeymoon we went to morocco wow yeah we how went was to that Marrakesh. beautiful yeah like the most that place is beautiful road camels yes yeah. road camels it was a beautiful it was a beautiful experience and um like I think that one day, like, we'll eventually have a home there. Like, they just live the simple life, and everyone, not everyone's happy, but, you know, they're happy with, like, the simple things. Sure. Yeah. Not so simple right. is uh, that he wants to move to Amsterdam. Well, no, not even that. <laughs> you, But you currently live on the West Coast. Yeah. And that's a different lifestyle. Very different. So what brought you out there, and, and why why it's like calabasas yeah why out there <laughs> which is it's so far there's no cell phone service out there <laughs> no yeah. but you know what i fucking love it do you go do you go to like the um there's like uh a mall small sort of thing like where it's like uh, the barnes and noble yeah barnes and noble and like and a restaurants italian and restaurant like, you know. that's like way overpriced <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah the commons yeah, yeah, yeah. commons yeah 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 i go there when i have to like meet people yeah, yeah. <laughs> other than that right no I yeah don't. that's where we had to kill time after our uh, our interview with drake's dad <laughs> yeah 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 because we didn't want to, yeah, we didn't want to sit in traffic right. on the way back to yeah. LA. We never yeah. would have gotten home. Yeah. It's horrible. Between ten and two, that's oh. like yeah. the sweet spot. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, picking up some game right now. Yeah. yeah outside of that, you're fucked. So, what brought yeah. you out there? Um. So uh, when we moved from we moved from Atlanta to um, Miami on a whim, mm -hmm. and then we moved from Miami to LA calabasas and i have a crazy story about that too so i know you guys remember the incident the soccer incident mm -hmm. okay so that fucking like ruined everything man like we were on the brink of like getting finally getting into like the big festivals and booking like college shows and all this other shit and all that just got it's like they fucking pulled the carpet from underneath us right so we lost a lot of money like a lot of money and we were just like you know what fuck it so we packed up our house in Miami, literally had everything in storage in Los Angeles because we just felt like that was like just the next stop for us. We went on our honeymoon, came back. Well, before we went, you know, yeah, we went on our honeymoon. We came back. We got like an Airbnb mm -hmm. in uh, Calabasas because that was like a friend just like recommended Calabasas to us. So we got an Airbnb there. So we're there with our two kids, Nanny. Um, but it was time to go on tour. So we left, everything's still in storage, mm. <laughs> nowhere to live. We went on the, I think this is like the Isla tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Isla album tour. Um, we were in an SUV, our fucking kids on the back seat doing it's like we're basically starting over again sure <laughs> yeah um and then when we came back off tour we were looking at houses and we ended up in the same fucking neighborhood that we had the airbnb in mm. and it's just like i don't know guys like i'm just <laughs> led i allow myself to be led is, is, is that freeing 
it's so fucking freeing. Yeah. Like I just literally allow myself to be led. Like I'm not like this has to go like this. Like I don't give a fuck because everything is just gonna happen with yo to. your parents were sort of right by the way they were like yeah gonna travel the world free <laughs> right, spirit like right. she'll go off you know what i never fucking thought about <laughs> <Yeah>. like that <laughs> but yeah they were so your parents um you know are they from baton rouge they're actually well my mom is from new orleans okay and my dad was from mississippi got and it and they just made home but back yeah home. But like you know, settled in Baton Rouge, yeah. lived there, still live there. Yeah. So like, yeah, they were they were stable. They were gonna be there, and yeah. they were not gonna leave. Right. <laughs> you're not that person. No, you you're know? more like nomadic. You're just like you know, yes. yeah, just like find a city, plop down there yep. for <laughs> as long as you need to, and then you move on. Yeah, and so I love exploring. Are you, is there any city that you would have stayed there longer? No, but I. It not, always had its time. Yeah, everything had like an expiration. So like two, three years max. Well, then that begs the question, are you getting the itch right now? <laughs> I'm definitely getting the itch to like travel, but I have found that like LA, that's definitely, we'll always, it's always a nice have space. A, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll always have a home there. Well, um, it- have you run into Drake or any Drake uh, acolytes while like in, <laughs> in, Ca- in Calabasas? I run into a lot of other celebrities like Kardashians, Travis. Um, not Travis Scott. Oh, Travis, Travis Barker. Barker. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Run into him I was like, both time. work. You yeah. know, they yeah. both live there. But yeah, you run into... Travis Barker's hard to miss, by the way. Like, yeah, <laughs> he is. I feel like he's short. No, he's like a nice height. He's not as a tall as... A nice height? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, like, yeah. he's not like... Shout sure. out to all of our smaller fans out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, everybody know. in Houston, yeah. everybody yeah. in Atlanta. Atlanta. Right, yeah. exactly right, yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, he's not like super tall. But, yeah, that's, yeah. Short. but that's that's one thing that's interesting about like Calabasas is like a trip to Erwan oh, or a trip to Starbucks, you're going, you're to, run going into, to run into... And literally Erwan everybody. is like our spot. Like, everyone in there knows us. They know the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. They got your order right? Ready? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um do you guys see or run into TMZ people like way too often? Not, or not often not enough? Not out there. Oh great. You know what? It happened one time and I was like, who the fuck do they think I am? Yeah, right. Like I got this was at the time when I was driving my G Wagon and I got out and all I hear is the flashes and this guy was sitting in his car. In, uh, with the camera like out the window, I'm like, who the fuck does he? Like think a long I am? lens, like yeah. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> how crazy! You stepped out of your G wagon, and they yeah. thought you were important. <laughs> I know, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, but who the fuck do you think I am? I'm like, I'm I mean, just... <laughs> I'm not saying that his instincts were right, but we had you on our podcast for a yeah, reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but I don't look at myself like that. Yeah, so yeah. It's just like, but in that moment, you know? like. <laughs> like there's no way for you to win by the way you know like they're yeah. catching you on like whatever like a thursday afternoon or whatever fucking airway, but yeah. you can't you can't give them the finger because then like they'll print <laughs> no, that right. or like that would have been so good though yeah, that doesn't go that way do you yeah. find them at the airport too airport oh they will harass the fuck out of you at how, the airport. how do you get past it right well i most of the time it, it happens when i'm with kevin so yeah. i just let them like hassle him. Okay. oh nice <laughs> yeah you give that, him up yeah he's the sacrifice yeah kevin. yeah Damn. because they actually like there's this one guy i don't even know his name but he'll actually ask kevin before he does anything and I'm oh, that's like, nice yeah right. so that's All what right. i say i just let kevin yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, other times, like, being on Rodeo, though, it's like, if you fucking go on Rodeo, like, you're asking for you're it. Right. Anywhere in yeah. Beverly Hills, you're asking for it. So now you're in a place where, okay, you guys are on tour again. Yeah. Um, you have the new project out. Yeah. And there's there's lots of music, and you guys are at the top of the charts, and you're, yeah. you know, doing very well. <laughs> Does it feel different? Um, It's very different because it's like... Okay, so we did the Isla album. That shit was, like, fucking amazing. We kind of, like, lost momentum with him, like, going to jail. So right. it's, like, in a sense, so much shit has changed in the industry, like, in like while he was gone. So it's kind of like us trying to, you know, get with the new way of doing things, but still, like, staying true to, like, our brand and ourselves. Um, well, but, I mean, but specifically, like, what do you think was something that you that you didn't, 
pick up on while he was in jail? Like, what 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 is the new thing that it's like the streaming shit? Mm. Yeah. Like our people buy. Like that's what they're. I'm not gonna say trained to do, but that's what they're comfortable doing. Yeah. And we there was like a like a little thing when the charts came out that we were the top sellers, like as far as people actually physical pur- and yeah, yeah. yeah purchasing the music. But when it came to streaming, it was the baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was like it's this weird kind of like you know yeah. And, uh, but that being said, like his streaming numbers are very good. But his streaming numbers are amazing. But yeah. when it came to just those numbers alone, it yeah. was kind of like yeah. yeah. So you guys, you know, you you come from that like yeah. burning CDs, handing them out, like you know, hand to hand, one fan at a time thing. Yeah. Now it's you go to the Spotify, you go to an Apple Music, you play them the music. You're like, what do you think about this right. and that? And it's not and it's not like waiting for like a. Uh, you know, a radio station or like a DJ's right. got to get off the set or whatever it is. So that's new relationships to make and yeah. new ones to keep up. And that's a new reality for you guys. Yeah, it is very new. But I actually love it because you can fucking walk in a room with Kevin and just let him do his thing. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, just wait for something to happen. Right. What, was he always good at, at, um, at like doing that artist forward sort of like handout sort of thing? Uh, no. <laughs> He's much better at it now, and I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, because you're a shy person at heart. Yeah. I feel like he's probably shy at heart, too. He really is, too. Like, I feel like I am, but, like, I can... When it's time to, like, perform, Yeah, I can perform. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I'd rather just sit in that comfy spot over there on the sofa in the (laughs) corner. (laughs) So now you are on another level, Mm -hmm. and you're in a newer like technological world yeah. or whatever but there's still like old school things that like kevin would like to do as in like you want to shoot a music video all right we're going to take it down in washington you're yeah. going to assemble everybody and yeah. make the right calls and you're still going to go out there and do that mm-hmm. is there anything that you're like not fearful of but you're just like do we really have to do like this part again to be honest with you those are the videos that i'm like <laughs> Like, I might just sit, and I'm not afraid. I'm just like, this makes me kind of nervous. Yeah. Like, you know, because you don't know what could happen. Like, you're not in a controlled environment. Right. Yeah. And, you know, in the past, with us being in those environments, yeah. it wasn't, like, always the best ending. So, those type of videos, I do not, I do not like doing Right. Those. <laughs> what are you, well, what, speaking of things that you don't like, mm-hmm. I read an article in Men's Health that, it's great that uh, that that Kevin is getting healthy. Yeah, you know all that. You know, like his body's like crazy. Yeah, but he's waking up at like two a.m. to go like work out and just yeah. like his diet is crazy. Yeah. how on board with all of those things are you? Yeah, do you only have water <laughs> so, during the daylight hours? Like, <laughs> so actually, I do. Wow, and my shit is like even crazier than his. What? <laughs> so okay, I don't get up at two o'clock in the morning, but when I'm at home, I will get up at six. I will work out on an empty stomach. E- empty stomach. I drink nothing but key lime water. And I'm also, I'm plant-based. Okay. So I don't eat any dairy, no fucking meat whatsoever. But if I'm in the airport and they have like fucking tortilla soup with no meat in it, yeah. but it's like chicken broth, like I'll fucking Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah, make yeah, the yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. yeah, I'll eat that. Wow, but what a what an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a foodie though, mm-hmm. but i when it's like when i'm at home and i'm like on schedule and like on track with everything like i eat super fucking clean what has changed for you with that diet do you really think more clearly do you your focus yeah when you don't consume meat which by the way lowers your vibration um it it does like you feel light you feel free you can fucking think better Mm -hmm. like i love it and is that tough on the road finding places that uh adhere to your diet it's very difficult it's very difficult but it's fine because you guys don't eat anyway (laughs) (laughs) we'll eat like at the end of the day when we actually think about eating yeah (laughs) your thoughts are so clear (laughs) yeah you'll finally remember to eat and your and your kids are also yeah on the same diet so yeah my kids actually they go to a plant-based school in oh uh, Calabasas. Okay, that, that, that's, that, yeah, that is so Calabasas. Yeah. Very Calabasas, yeah. <laughs> that's another reason why I'm like, we're never leaving. <laughs> if you look back now and you consider like everything that you've done, mm-hmm. what are you most proud of with your guys' business? Man, just the fact that the two of us just had a fucking vision 
and that we've manifested like everything that we have to this day is something that we manifested like no one fucking gave it to us we didn't receive any fucking handouts if anything like we paid for all the knowledge that we gained you know what i'm saying so that is what makes me like keep fucking going like every single day and then the fact that we get tons of like letters and emails just from the most random ass people just saying like man do you guys realize that for one kevin's music like fucking got me through this time or helped me to do this and drika like you're such an inspiration because we know that you know that behind every you know that cliche behind every great man is a even greater woman or whatever so um and that like i fucking love that like that keeps me going yeah well look i, I there is that saying right <laughs> yeah. like behind every great man is a great woman but yeah. but also you're a great woman by yourself yeah you have achieved yeah. things while kevin's been away yeah. maybe while kevin didn't believe in himself yeah while kevin was doing his work you're doing your work right. and that's why we're so thrilled to have you up here Aww. again to tell your story <laughs> because you are remarkable yeah, and thank you. your respect across this industry is a thousand you know and that's awesome yeah and it's just it's it's really great to hear your side of things and and we're so happy that you showed up again Man, yeah in our forty thousand so dollar apartment yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, congratulations on everything, you and Kevin, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again real soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this new episode of A Waste Time with It's The Real. Jeff, you want to find out more about us. Now, here's the thing. I always think it's simple. I say this every episode. If you don't recognize my voice, I'm Eric with the curly hair, and you, you're Jeff with the glasses. Yeah, the problem is that, like, our voices are too similar for a lot of people. You think so? Yes. I don't know. Like, is it that hard to tell the difference between, like, Pusha T and No Malice? Yes. Really? I mean, not for me. Okay. But, like, for a lot of people, sure. People can't tell the difference between us. I'm Eric. I'm Jeff. It's good. Yeah. Everybody's going to be like, great. I can't tell which one's which. All right. Well, you know what you should do? If you want to find out more about this podcast, it's called A Waste Time It's The Real. Go listen to all the episodes online. It doesn't help. No, How about? It, it helps me. It doesn't help them. What you should do is you should follow us on Instagram at It's The Real. You should follow us on Twitter at It's The Real. Twitter probably won't help, but if you go on Instagram, the one that's tagged It's The Real Jeff, that's me. I'm the one with this voice. Okay. You're It's The Real Eric. Yeah. That's that voice. Okay. What if people want to find out more about what's going on with us, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Where can they go? You can always go to It's The Real.com. It's The Real.com for all of your It's The Real needs, including our newsletter. Yes. On It's The Real.com. Uh, do we owe the people a newsletter? Yes. Okay. This is Jeff talking. <laughs> I owe you a newsletter. It's okay. been a while. Okay. You can also go and check out itsthrill.com slash shop. That's where we have all our merch. All of our merch, all of our sales. We've got two going right now. Yeah. You can always listen to all of our old episodes and our new ones if you go to any streaming platform, including the one that you're listening to right now. So that's YouTube. That's Spotify. That's CastBox. Whatever you're using right now. Google. I don't know. Wherever you're listening. We've got 270 or 80 more of these on whatever platform you're listening to. You can also go to Twitter at It's The Real, Instagram at It's The Real if you want to find out more about us and be able to tell which one is which. Okay. Jeff, now is the time where we shout out to people who are interested in being shouted out. So, I asked the internet, I said, hey. Hey. You. What's that say? Everybody look what's going down. I said, if you want to shout out on this episode with Drika Gates, reply to this message with the name of the best woman in your life, and we will shout you both out. So, Jeff, who are we shouting out today? Daniel David Abu Kalbs out in London. Yeah. Who said, the best woman in my life is my wife, Nabila. Shout out to her. Incognito. Yeah. Says Mama Audrey. Big shout out to Mama Audrey. Haven't met her. Love her though. Great. Detroit player who is not actually in Detroit. Right. But it's in his heart. He's a Detroit player. Yes. Also in his heart. His mama. Shout out to his mama. Okay, Ray. That's Ray Rodriguez, but not our Ray Rodriguez. Well, I mean, he's he's, he's a, a Ray Rodriguez. Yes. Why do I keep saying it like I like I, 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 I don't know. But I shout out to him regardless. But OK Ray said, should I even say it? And yes, that is the prompt. Yes. But you know what? Shout out to whoever he's alluding to. That just means that, yo, Ray Rodriguez is out here like, <laughs> slaying like a bunch of ladies. We, we don't know. We don't know. I'm trying to like, I'm, Jeff, I'm not in the business of spreading rumors. OK. Are you? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Anissa 
out in California. Shout out to Anissa. Shankopotamus. Yes. Says Sarah because it's her birthday tomorrow. That's Sarah with no H. Big shout out to Sarah and happy birthday to you. Matt Fastow. Yo. The our Stow. guy. The Stow. Shout out to him. Said Sophie. Yo, shout out to Sophie who is not his goddaughter, but is his goddaughter's his daughter. Sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Justin Fleischer, who yeah, yeah. is Sophie's godfather, said, what about Arya, though? Now, that's Matt's <laughs> goddaughter. There's a little bit of, you know, they... they godfather they, tension? No, like, it seems like they've figured out their beef. Okay, great. So, shout out to Matt. Yep. Shout out to Justin. Yep. Shout out to Sophie. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Arya. Yes. And no shout outs to their parents. <laughs> Scoob underscore 75 said my beautiful girlfriend star yo big shout out to star do you know her i don't but i'm i'm in the mood to shout people out yeah but that's a big shout out yo big shout out to star i also want to shout out steven dolsky's mother yep shout out to her karen dolsky all right the creator his inspiration his rock his lifeline yes she loves deconstructing big ah, first video ever. now i'm a fan yes i'm a big fan shout out to mama dolsky Shout out to all you out there and your mamas. Jeff, anything else? No. <laughs> all right. As always, guys, not for real, for real. Sure, sure. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.